Howdy dowdy bug buds! Welcome back to yet another episode in my Transportation Tales mini-series. Today we're going to be covering some uncomfortable encounters, where I'll be talking about some stories that were, well, uncomfortable. Now, they're honestly not that bad, but some people may find some stories more unsettling than others. So I'll try to put warnings at the start of each story, you know, just in case. Ah, also, 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 if some topics do make you feel uncomfortable, please don't force yourself to watch. Your mental well-being should always come first. So with that said, onto the video. Okie dokie, so this story takes place during one of my very first weeks of uni. Shaka, I know. Like normal, I arrived just as the bus left, so I had to wait another half an hour for the next one to come. And because no one else was there, I decided to sit down on the bench to wait for the bus. But after about 15 to 20 minutes, three ladies came. Now, I don't know how common it is in other places, but here at least it was kind of a social expectation to let older people have your seat. So I offered them my seat, and strangely enough, only the one wearing casual clothes sat down. From the way they were talking to each other, I assumed they were all close friends, so imagine my surprise when the two ladies ditched her so they could talk to me instead. The two introduced themselves, the one with long black hair being B, and the second one with short blonde hair being Maggie, not the actual names for obvious reasons. From there, we started talking, and for the most part, it was pretty whatever, just your generic conversation stuff. But then, they brought up the topic of religion, and asked if I was a fellow brother. But when I told them I was atheist, oh my gosh, let me tell you, they did not let it go. They proceeded to ask why, and you know, I kinda just naively said the first thing that came to mind. I was a proud member of the Iris House, which for those unfamiliar is essentially a regional way of saying I like men. Now is that the only reason? No. But typically, once you tell someone that you like men, they'll say something along the lines of, oh it makes sense, and drop the conversation. But not these two, these two were just getting started. Instead, they said perfect, and that's what they were actually here for. Yeah, so it turns out they were from America, and after hearing how Australia was becoming more sin riddled, they decided to fly over to help us from our impending doom. But don't worry, they did assure me that I was okay, cause I could be cured. Yeah, big yikes. They then continued to spout nonsense, like how they forgave me and that once I was cured, I would be openly accepted into their religion. And at this point, I realised why that third girl dipped the first second she could, because holy moly guacamole were these two exhausting. It didn't matter how many times I tried to tell them I wasn't interesting, they would just keep talking. It was as though I was talking to a brick wall. Luckily, the bus came not too long after, and I thought that would be the end of it. But nope, it couldn't be that easy. Maggie decided to sit next to me while B sat in front and face back the whole time, essentially trapping me between them and preventing me from finding an opportunity to leave. And just like that, I was bombarded with constant dribble for what felt like an eternity. It was as though they couldn't see how incredibly uncomfortable they were making me, and how I had no intention of being converted. At one point, they even went as far as to ask me to go to their church. That way, I'd somehow be able to see the error of my ways. I tried telling them that I was busy with schoolwork, but of course, that didn't work, cause they kept insisting that once would be enough. Anyway, after what felt like hours, I was finally able to get off, but as I was leaving, they gave me a card and told me to call them when I was ready, and every single time I recall the story, I feel as though I should have just taken the Petty Betty route and just ripped the card up in front of them. That way, I would have at least had some kind of satisfying ending. But you know, that involves confrontation, so it'll just forever live rent free as an alternate timeline shower thought. Anyway, I arrived home, threw it in the bin, and carried on with my day. And that's how I had my first uncomfortable encounter. So yeah, that's about it for that one. Sorry about the abrupt ending, the story kinda just ends with me taking the nonsense and leaving it exhausted, so I didn't really have a strong conclusion to it. If you want to believe a fake ending where I ripped up the card in front of them, be my guest. Maybe that way the story will feel more complete. Who knows? Also, side note, but I had no clue these types of people actually existed in real life. Like the so cartoonishly religious kind. I always thought they were just super exaggerated to ensure a character was hated. But oof, 
I guess not. Anyway, I want to say lesson learned about the whole be careful what you tell the strangers thing, but the next story kind of proves that wasn't quite the case. The next story takes place late at night because I was coming back from a compulsory night class. And much like my other stories, I arrived just as the bus was leaving. About 10 minutes later, a man, who I shall refer to as Mordecai, arrived. But he stayed far away from the bench where I was sitting, so I assumed he didn't want the seat. After another 10-ish minutes passed, another person came. And because I was still a little scarred from the last story, I changed up my approach a bit. Rather than just asking them if they wanted my seat, I would just get up and leave the seat open. That way, they would know they could have it and I wouldn't feel guilty about not offering my seat. Plus, it meant I wouldn't be breaking one of the unspoken rules where I lived. You know, stuff like avoid wearing expensive clothes and jewellery, try not to stand out in any way, shape or form, avoid making eye contact with other people, and most importantly, never ever talk to strangers unless absolutely necessary. And when it was nighttime, these rules were 10 times more important. Anyway, after I gave up my seat, Mordecai came over and initiated a conversation. He loudly introduced himself and told me he was impressed with how I actually had manners for someone my age. He then asked for my name and I instinctively lied by saying that my name was actually Casey. Now, I don't know why I lied, maybe it was the look in his eyes, or maybe it was just how loud he was being, but my gut was telling me to avoid this man. However, at the same time, I immediately felt guilty, cause I felt like I was being too judgy. Just cause he was scary and loud didn't automatically mean he had ill intentions, right? Shortly after, Mordecai asked why I was out so late. And because I felt a little guilty still, I didn't bother lying and told him that I was coming home from uni. A couple of minutes later, the bus came and as I got on, I thanked the bus driver, you know, like normal. But for some strange reason, Mordecai decided it was worth excessive praise. And I don't know why, but it felt low-key forced, like the dude was straight up acting like it was the first time in 20 years he had ever heard someone say thank you to a bus driver. So I sat down and unfortunately for me, he decided to sit right next to me. Now typically, you'd expect each person to occupy about half a seat each, right? But for some strange reason, he sat close, real close, to the point that it felt like he was pushing me against the window. The conversation continued and he asked more about my degree and what courses I was doing. And after I gave him some general answers, he then told me I was in luck because he could get me an internship at his company. I wouldn't get proper training and I wouldn't get paid because they were in a financial slump, but I would be able to get some essential experience. So yeah. He then told me more about the role and asked if I knew how to use a specific accounting software. But when I told him no, he completely flipped. He moved even closer and started yelling at me, asking if I was lying about my course and whatnot. Luckily, once I reminded him I was only a first year, he eased back to how he was before and pretended like nothing just happened. Mordecai then told me to make sure I knew it on time, and I don't know how else to explain it, but it kind of sounded like a threat, like learn it or else kind of vibes. Anyway, I tried telling him I had other plans, but he wouldn't listen and instead pushed the conversation onto what my social media handles were. Now, at this point, I had already lied about my name, so if I showed him my profile, he'd know I was lying, and I really didn't want to take that risk after he just screamed at me for nothing. I ended up telling him that I didn't have social media, and boy, did his face turn stone cold. Dude didn't even bother with a fake smile anymore. He loudly shouted, how doesn't someone as young as you have social media? And I can still remember the fear I felt when he said, prove it. And the saddest part of this was the fact that I didn't actually use social media, with the exception of Messenger of course. But there was no way I wanted him to send me a friend request, especially after he just screamed at me again. I tried telling him that I didn't have data, but then he gripped my shoulder super hard and shouted, prove it, once more. So I caved and showed him my phone, which surprise surprise had virtually nothing on it. Luckily he took it surprisingly well, he didn't even bother asking me to open messenger or search my name on his phone. 
Instead, he just wrote down his number and told me to give him a call when I was ready. He then went back to how he was acting before, putting on his fake smile and lowering his voice, which, mind you, was still quite loud. Now, did he remain calm for the remainder of the trip? No, the answer is no. He couldn't even last two minutes before he started ranting about how he despises liars more than anything. So yeah, I guess I dodged a bullet. He then mentioned something along the lines of, oh, so what time do you normally finish? And before I could even respond, he answered his own question with, I'm just kidding, you should finish around the same time each week, right? I laughed it off, but deep down I was petrified. The way he said it as though he was going to come here the same time every week for me was just terrifying. And as though he couldn't get any creepier, he then started asking where I lived, and I was so conflicted. On one hand, if I told the truth, he would have a rough idea of where I lived, and I definitely didn't want that. But on the other hand, he's made it abundantly clear that he hates liars with a burning passion, so if he found out I lied, I don't know what he'd do to me. In the end, I chose to lie, and I immediately regretted it, because he then said, great, I live near there too. And let me tell you, I had never felt so scared in my life. I don't even know if he genuinely lived there, or if it was just an excuse to get off at the same stop, but there was no way in a million years I wanted to take that risk. Eventually, someone else got off near a convenience store, and I quickly made the excuse that I needed to get something before going home. But then, Mordecai grabbed my wrist and mumbled something. He then immediately raised his voice, screaming liar as he tightened his grip. After that, he proceeded to yell, that's not your stop, like three times in a row, and at this point, I was sure he's going to beat me up. Now, because, you know, I didn't want to get beaten up, I continued the lie, telling him that I needed to stock up some coffee because I had a stacked ton of exams coming up. And surprisingly, that was enough for him to loosen his grip. He then told me that it was okay and that he could come with me, but you know, that seems super sketch. So I tried explaining to him that the next bus wouldn't be for a while, and that it wasn't worth the trouble. But then, he didn't want to drop it and kept asking, are you sure? Eventually, after reassuring him several times that I would call him, he actually let me go, shocker I know. Although admittedly, he did look quite agitated about it. As I got off, it seemed as though Mordecai changed his mind, cause I could see him get up and walk towards the door. But before he could get off, the bus driver closed the door on him and continued to drive away. And from the faint distance, you could hear him repeatedly yell, let me off. But luckily, the bus driver kept on driving, so pew pew, I no longer had to deal with him. Just to be safe, I went into the convenience store and waited there until my mum picked me up. So yeah, I made it home safely. And because I never wanted to see the dude again, I immediately emailed my tutor asking to swap classes. And after explaining why, I was allowed to move to an early time on a different day. And thankfully, I never saw him again. Okie dokie, so that's it for this video I guess. I actually planned to do three stories, but this turned out way longer than I thought it would, so sorry about that. Now, what did we learn from this video? Well, apparently never offer your seat, seeing as both of these situations happened cause of it. Also, trust your gut instincts. Better safe than sorry, because stranger danger is real, evidently. Rightio, with that said, if you made it this far into this video, feel free to like and subscribe, it'd help the channel a lot. Until next time, don't let the bed bugs bite. Love you all, bye bye!